Today's video is on the topic of the landing vehicle tract, also known as the LVT, alligator, water buffalo, amphitrack, amtrack, amtank, etc. I figure I've only talked about aircraft so far on the channel, so why not check two boxes by talking about an amphibious vehicle that a lot of people probably know exists, but don't know that much about. Let's get to it, shall we? The story of the LVT starts in 1935 with the peculiar invention of an American engineer by the name of Donald Roebling, hoping to create a rescue vehicle able to traverse swamps and marshes for civilian use. Roebling decided that a floating tractor was the way to go, creating the alligator in the process. As fate would have it, the United States Marine Corps was developing amphibious combat doctrines at the same time only taking interest in the alligator after stumbling across an ad for it in a copy of Life magazine. A fully militarized and more seaworthy derivative of the alligator was requested, beginning development with the outbreak of war in Europe, with the first prototype being completed in May of 1940. The second prototype, tested in that September, had a more powerful engine and was to be the basis of the first production variant of, designated as such in its formal adoption in mid-1941, the LVT-1. This first model could carry 2.25 tons, just over 2 metric tons, or 18 fully equipped personnel. As introduced, the LVT-1 was intended only as a method of resupplying landed forces, subsequently had no armor protection. The drivetrain had issues on hard surfaces, making operations outside of soft, wet coastal areas difficult. The LVT's first use was in this role in the U.S. landings at Guadalcanal, with approximately 128 vehicles ferrying supplies to landed Marines. A large number of LVT-1s were fitted with 30 and 50 caliber machine guns, and some with 9 millimeters of armor around the driver's cab shortly before their use in the landings at Tarawa. Although useful, the LVT-1s would soon be joined by more mature and reliable LVTs, and eventually be mostly phased out of use due to its issues that the new vehicles did not have. The first of these improved models to see use came in 1942. This vehicle was designated the LVT-2, dubbed the Water Buffalo, a name that would be used on all cargo LVTs from this point forward. The main changes included a new powertrain, taken from the M3A1 Stuart light tank, new suspension for the tracks, and bolted track grousers, which allowed for much easier replacement, which proved useful as they would wear down quickly if used on reefs or solid ground. With a top speed of 20 miles per hour on land and 2.5 on water, the LVT-2 was 8 and 0.6 miles an hour faster than the LVT-1 on land and water, respectively. The LVT-2 could also carry about 1.25 tons more than its predecessor. This version would see the most widespread use of any of the original LVT family, being used in a large number of Pacific landings and even for river crossings in Europe. Hoping to use the LVT in contested landing operations, the U.S. Marines got what they wanted later in 1942 with the LVT-A1, A standing for armored. This may be a bit confusing, but this model was derived directly from the LVT-2, not the LVT-1. Design changes include the addition of 6 to 12 millimeters of steel armor on the hull of the vehicle, and the addition of a turret nearly identical to that of the aforementioned M3 light tank, mounting a 37 millimeter cannon. This is the first of the so-called AM tanks, and was used to support Marines while and after landing on defended beaches. This variant could still carry a half ton of supplies and could reach 25 miles per hour on land. 1943 would see the introduction of the first fully armored dedicated cargo variant, the LVT-A2, which was almost identical to the previous LVT-2. 13 millimeters of armor were fitted to the driver's cab and 6.5 millimeters were applied to the rest of the hull. Surprisingly enough, the performance of the vehicle was unaltered by these changes, other than the fact that it sat noticeably deeper when afloat. Another cargo LVT would come along in 1943, the LVT-4. It had the engine moved to the nose, allowing for a large ramp to be fitted to the rear of the vehicle. This change allowed for 30 armed personnel to be carried instead of 18. The LVT-4 was sometimes armed with a combination of 30 caliber machine guns and a 20 millimeter cannon, the latter only in British service. Armor kits were available, but for the most part, LVT-4s were unarmored. 
This was the most produced variant, with a total of 8,348 vehicles being delivered, seeing use with the U.S. Marines, U.S. Army, and British Army. Starting design work earlier, but entering service later, the LVT-3 Bushmaster instead opted to move its engines to the side sponsons and switch from the powertrain of the older M3 Stewart to that of the M5 Stewart. This resulted in a similar layout to the LVT-4, usually unarmored and able to carry the same number of troops, or a payload of 4.5 tons. This version would have its combat debut in 1945 and see service until its replacement in 1955. The next of the AM tanks would come in 1944 with the introduction of the LVT A4. Following the trend of taking parts from the Stuart line of vehicles, this variant used the turret off of the M8 howitzer motor gun carriage. The short-barreled 75mm gun was much better suited for infantry support, as it could fire a large high-explosive shell, something that is invaluable when trying to clear out enemy machine gun nests, bunkers, and other defensive positions. The number and types of machine guns mounted to this AM tank changed over time, as well as a number of LVT A4s being upgraded to LVT A5 standards with the addition of powered turret traverse and a gun gyro stabilizer. The LVT A5 would be the last of the major variants built during the war. The LVT line continued after the war, leading up to the current AAV used by the United States Marine Corps, among other operators. Some versions of the Amtrak that I want to mention briefly include the following. The captured and converted 57mm anti-tank gun armed LVT A4s used by Communist China. The dual flamethrower armed Sea Serpent used by the British in the Far East. French LVT A4s mounting either a 40mm Bofors gun or a 57mm recoilless rifle used in Indochina. British buffaloes fitted with the bobbin carpet layer to assist with the crossing of the Rhine. And last but not least, the LVT UX2 Goliath, a one off monster built in 1958. All right, that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you prefer me doing a mix of different vehicle types, if you'd rather me concentrate more on aircraft, ships, tanks, anything else like that, just let me know and I'll try to do that for the next video. Otherwise, uh, thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.